Hello and welcome back to the studio. Right, let's get straight on to this canvas. Today I'm going to be painting on a reclaimed 12 by 16 canvas. Um, I painted something on that previously and I thought, well, let's not waste the canvas. Let's do another lesson. So I put a ground on there with a bit of gesso. I added a bit of medium to that as well, just to keep everything nice together. And I'm just going to go straight in with a one-inch short flat today. I'm just going to moisten down my palette as I normally do. Um, picking up a bit, a bit of sail on blue and a little bit of white. Sail on blue and white. What a lovely colour. I love cerulean blue. I really do. And I'm using a matte medium. A medium mix, sorry. Um, I'm using a medium mix, uh, which is available on the website. Please pop along. Okay, so I'm going to put a bit of sky colour in there today. Just going straight in with a bit of sky colour. A bit of cerulean blue, a bit of white, a bit more white. Let's lighten this sky up. I want it quite light because I've got something coming in there that's quite dark. So we just lighten that up a bit like that. I want to come down to about there. Small sky today. Really is small sky. Get more. <clears throat> get a bit more cerulean blue on my brush just to just a little bit of colour just on the top there just to darken that sky up a touch I want to put a bit of colour in that sky I want to make it nice and inviting got trouble with your paint moving just add a little bit of moisture add a little bit of moisture to that paint there you go a bit of light let's just put a indication and possibly some very distant clouds in our sky like that there you go I'll do that's all you want to do simple as that Okay, washing my brush very quickly. I'm um, having a little think. Taking some moisture off my brush. Now I'm going to change over to. Um, just, I'm going to change over to a um, short flat. I think this is a um, number one short flat. Picking up some of that sail on blue, or cerulean blue. I keep calling it sail on. That's just the way I talk. <laughs> smallest amount, smallest amount of black to that. Smallest amount of black. Just to darken our blue up, just to turn it into a bit of a shade. Uh, let's put a little bit of a mountain today. Let's put a bit of a mountain in the distance. There we are. Whoosh, like that. Any shape you want. Any shape you want. Let's put a bit of a mountain in there. Scarging that down like that. Merge it all together. A little bit of shadow in there, a little bit of light there you go just a few little bits of shadow on that mountain might have gone in there a bit dark but it doesn't matter I'll show you a little trick in a second just to mist that off there we go get a little bit of white on the bottom of that mountain like that I went in a little bit dark there um, so don't worry we can recover and sometimes it's good to it's good to make mistakes like that because it shows I'm, I'm able to show you there now to recover that so let's just dry that off very 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 quickly Hope that's dry enough. Okay, so I'm picking up a short flat. Um, and I don't condone doing this, but in this particular instance, um, I'm just going to use some titanium white. There you go. I got a bit of contamination in my pot, I think. And I'm just going to go straight over the whole thing with a bit of that, like that.
Now you can do this with the medium mix that I sell on the website because it's got resins in it and um, it shouldn't underpaint and it won't underpaint I should say it won't underbind your paint so it won't flake now what I've done then is I've just gone over it very quickly with um, a very thin wash of um, titanium white you can use zinc mixing white zinc mixing white is the is the better option and you can get that um, in this particular range I use Winsor Newton Galleria acrylics now um, so you can get some of that and it's a very very um it's, it's a very transparent a transparent white so a titanium white is a little bit opaque for this but i needed to knock that back a little bit quicker than i was because um, i went in a bit dark so but we make mistakes we all make mistakes don't worry too much about that now and i'm um, just going to clean my brush very quickly Okay, so let's make some green. Now, I got a little bit of yellow. I'm using a fan brush. Here we are, one of them fan brushes. I don't know what size it is. It's an old one. A touch of black. Whoa, look at that. Olive green already. Because it's blue in Mars black. We want it quite light. Maybe touch of white to it. And let's just put... Tapping down like that. And tapping down like that. Maybe a little bit darker now. Let's get a bit of contrast in those trees. There we are. Put a few trees in. Bit of grass or something, I don't know. Not grass, but bushes and things. Add in a little bit of black to a little bit. Just to add a little bit of shadow in there. A bit more yellow. I'll do there, I think. Let's get a little bit of light. Oops, too much. A little bit of highlight here and there, and then and here, and then everywhere. I don't have to go too mad at that. This is going to be a quick painting, I hope, anyway, today. Okay, so wash that brush. Now, I wash my brushes in the washing station, as you can see. Um, it's a multi compartment. There you go. I got brushes on the right hand side, and I got three compartments there one with soap in the bottom. And if I put that there, you can see what I'm doing. So, this has got a little bit of a, a grid underneath it, which will take off the excess um, paint. And then you go into some soap and it's basically like doing this in your hand but you take off some soap and you wash that in your dirty compartment there and then rinse it off into some cleaner water and that cleans your brush 100 percent and what i do at the end of this then i um i lay my brushes down to dry and then you can clean this with a little bit of warm water and some soap um at the end of your session if you want to i'm lazy i don't so it doesn't matter okay and that's available on the website so let's pick up um let's pick up another short flat i'm going into some burned umber i'm going to add a little bit of yellow and a little bit of yellow ochre to that burned umber and a little bit of black i want to 
a lighter color that, that'll do what i'll do let's have a look let's have a look yeah that'll do there we go let's just put a bit of that there like that maybe a little bit darker and just put, plop, plop in that brown marks like this a little bit of black here and there a bit of black just make some shapes like that bring this down a little bit of yellow a little bit of white let's just lighten that up a touch there we go bring that down bit of burned number touch of black look for shapes just put just put shapes in the shadows so th this is a rock face look you can see as a highlight so I just put some shadows in underneath now to make make it look as if there's some shadows going on there and just it's basically how do you paint rocks well you just put lumps of paint on your canvas and you find out where these shadows and things are going there you go and all of a sudden this rock face will come together for you trust me it will we got a bigger rock thumb coming in there like that so we need to just block that out for a moment and just have fun just basically enjoy yourself and just put marks in here and there and then here and here and there like that a little bit of black now and then bring in some shadowy marks just to develop some possible rock shapes and things like that okay so we need to bring um, a little bit of this yellow there let's put a, a lighter shape in there like that now putting this brush down one side don't forget it's there otherwise it's going to dry on you and that's the last thing you want to do is um, that's the last thing you want to do is um, let your brush dry. Yeah, I wanted to try to find a bigger short flat. So I'm going to get some cerulean blue. A little bit of black. And let's put some shadow in there like this. Putting some blue in. I'm going back to this brush that we had the brown on because I want to get some black in there. Mix them. 
browns with that. Just get all these mergey colours together like this. Get your blue brush, get a bit more blue on your brush. Just merge that together. Picking up a bit of that black. Putting some shadow in that water. It's a waterfall. We're making a waterfall. So you've got to think. Think, use your head. Yeah, we are, might have another one coming off you. So let's get a little bit of this lighter colour. Maybe just bring a yellow, a bit of yellow into it. There we go. Just to catch the lighter touch. Bit of yellow ochre. Bit of black now, bringing some nice big rocks there. Rock shapes in. Bring some bit of white. Let's just lighten that colour up a touch because I'm gonna I wanna put a few rocks there like that and then I wanna lighten up some of these areas. Think of rocks and how, how rocks would look. There you go. You can see the the landscape coming to, together slowly now. Rocks everywhere. You. It's all rocky, rocky, rocky. some highlights in just don't think about rocks as I said just think about shapes look for shapes you'll see shapes look there's a shape there I can just make a rock there catching a bit of light maybe a lot of it is optical illusions that's all it is, optical illusions. That's all painting is, is light. Playing with light. If you can paint light, you can paint anything. That's all it is. Just find the shapes of rocks I'm making. Okay, so we've got a little waterfall in there now. Um, I want to bring in some black into this burnt ember. I want to make this a darker colour, completely darker colour. Because I want to bring in a little rock formation now. Like this. And that's going to come down like that. Same principle, same principle, I'm going to leave a gap, I want to leave a gap there, leave that white gap. Just paint all that in, with black and burnt ember, or burnt ember and black. <laughs> Just paint all that in nice and black like that. 
And going from the small canvases, I don't know if um, you watched the last uh, two lessons that I've done with the seascapes, which are on 10 by 8 canvases. If you haven't, please click the i-cards by there, and um, that'll take you down. Or look in the descriptions, and I'll put some links in there. Um, and then, to go from that size canvas to this size canvas is a little bit easier for you. And then you can build up to whatever size canvases you want, really. Um, so... Just work on smaller canvases first. Get the blends right and, 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 and that. And just pure black now. Just put a bit of pure black in just to add some shadows because it's quite dark over here. And build up your canvases slowly. And, and do a little bit of practice. Just just paint for the sake of painting sometimes. Just don't think about painting anything. Just say, oh, I'll just paint the sky today. And just paint the sky. You don't have to paint loads of stuff. But the more you paint the same subject, the better. So if you have, if you have, if you did say um, four or five skies, just skies, then you're going to be good at skies. And the same with rocks. Rocks are, you think are hard, but they're not that hard actually. It's just um, shapes and shadows really. I, I struggled really, really hardly, hard with um, hardly. <laughs> I struggled really hard with um, rocks and stuff same with skies same with clouds and sometimes all it is is just that we overthink too much that's all it is just adding a bit of cerulean blue and a little bit of white and not worrying too much about the brush strokes just letting the brush strokes make their own movements there we go and just not not over not overworking the brush stroke Getting a little bit of black to the blue, just to get some shadow in. A little bit more black. My seat is creaking. <laughs> it's like me, getting old. It's like me, getting old. Bit of shadow in the water. There you go. Now, what I'm going to do is um, quickly dry that off with a hairdryer. Um, and then we'll move on because I, I, I don't want to paint wet in wet now. I need this to dry. Now I only dried certain sections of that where I want to work and the rest should dry naturally now I think. Um, so I'm going to go back into my, um, my blue brush there. I'm just going to give it a little swirl. There we go. Just to get the most of that paint off. I'm going to get some cerulean blue now. And I'm going to come, this water is, is gone across there and it's gone behind that rock and it's, it's just flowing down this rock like that now, bouncing off there, coming down and into there like that. So it's just going across there, let's put a little bit of blue in there like that, just to find the, the trace of this water, it's just going to come down, come in bouncing off there like that. There we go. Get a bit of white. Let's lighten up this blue now. A bit of darker blue there, across there like that. Don't worry about going over that, we can paint that in in a minute. I'm trying to work on this water now. I want this to come down on an angle like that, like as if it's just hitting some rocks. And we can put the rocks in in a minute. That's going to go over there like that. There we go. So we've got some water in there now. Let's just put a little bit of colour in. I'm going to get a little bit of yellow ochre. Just to put a bit of 
colour into that. I need to put a bit of more definition there. Dry brush in a little bit now. I haven't got much paint on this brush, so it's it's like a dry brush effect. There you go. Just going to put that brush one side. I'm going to pick up um, my other short flat, which I got this black and brown color on. I'm going to put some rocks in. No. There you go. That's going to come down. I'm going to get a bit of black in there then. Really black in there. Like that. A bit of brown. I'm going to have a bit of a. I want a bit of a stone there touch of white I think just a make it look a bit more stone like let's put another stone then directly in front of that like that and we can bring this stone in front of that one we're gonna have another stone just there I think what we need to do now is get our fan brush again where do we put our fan brush <laughs> I don't know I've lost my fan brush so I'm gonna get some pure white I'm going to add a little bit of moisture to that. Taking a bit of excess off now. Yeah. Fingers, cro fingers crossed. I hope this works. I hope it does. Bring it down. Bringing that down like that. A couple of remarks here and there. That's going to be all. Pshh. Mist and steam and mist and steam. Steam. There's no steam, Clive. <laughs> mist. Splashes. Pshh. Yeah, like that. And then we have another. Let's get a bit more white. This water's flying everywhere. There we go. That's going to come down there as well. Like that. Okay, so we'll put that brush there. Going back into our brown brush. Now we made the, br the stones with this. Put a big 
the stone in there because it's got to have something to hold our water back <laughs> otherwise it's just it's going to go anywhere isn't it let's put another big stone there there's another one sticking out like that put a bit of highlight on these stones There we go. And put these things in where you think they will look better. And put a little one in there. See, so how long ago was that? Looks pretty good. Let's get some of this light reflecting on this dark side now. Use a force Luke. <laughs> Use a force Clive. Put a bit of colour in. Bring a bit of light here and there like that as well. bring these stones in that's a sheer face that's more rocky than anything looking pretty good at the moment let's get some more burnt umber and black and let's put some more rocks now let's put another big rock in front of this one like this dark as you come forward Again, bring a bit of that white and highlight into these rocks. Dragging down just a little bit of shadow just into that water. Like that, getting a bit more light. There is rock now. for those shapes give for those shapes touch more white on the palette bit of burnt amber, bit of white again the shapes rocks in it's one big almighty rock and you can have little ones
Let's go back into our glue brush. Don't leave these brushes soak too long. Put a little bit of highlight just on the there like that. Let's go back into some white. So looking a nice nice waterfall. Let's put a bit more mist in there. And then just taking off let's get some more kitchen roll. I'm gonna take off the most of the paint as I'm gonna just dry brush. It's a little bit of splay. as well as I wanted to so it's just let's get rid of that a minute picking up a script lining brush now getting a bit of black and brown mix that we used all I'm going to do is, oops, a bit of black and brown, went into a bit of white by mistake then. some dead trees in here like that Maybe a little cronky old dead tree there like that. Let's put a little bit of pattern in him like that. There we go. It's like a dead mountain. I don't know. They've been washed too much with water, I expect. <laughs> I don't know. Let's put a few more rocks and things in. 
Maybe we want a bit more highlight here and there like that. And you can put some more detail in if you wanted to. But I think for that lesson, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Please pop along to www.clive5art.co.uk where you'll see the shop. And um, there's loads of things in there that you can um, purchase, like acrylic mediums and brushes and all this wonderful stuff. And um, please subscribe. That's all I ask is please subscribe. Mondays, there's lessons every week. Every week on a Monday, you'll have a lesson. There we go. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a good Thank you very much for joining me in the studio. I hope you've enjoyed this one and I will see you and next time. Bye bye.